June 5th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Kings chapters 1 and 2 from the Old Testament. After Ahab died, Moab rebelled against Israel. Ahaziah fell through a window lattice in his upper chamber in Samaria and was injured. He sent messengers with these orders. Go, ask Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron, if I will survive this injury. But the Lord's angelic messenger told Elijah the Tishbite, Go to meet the messengers from the king of Samaria. Say this to them. You must think there is no God in Israel. That explains why you are on your way to seek an oracle from Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. You will not leave the bed you lie on, for you will certainly die. So Elijah went on his way. When the messengers returned to the king, he asked them, Why have you returned? They replied, A man came up to meet us. He told us, Go back to the king who sent you and tell him, This is what the Lord says. You must think there is no God in Israel. That explains why you are sending for an oracle from Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron. Therefore you will not leave the bed you lie on, for you will certainly die. The king asked them, Describe the appearance of this man who came up to meet you and told you these things. They replied, He was a hairy man and had a leather belt tied around his waist. The king said, He is Elijah the Tishbite. The king sent a captain and his fifty soldiers to retrieve Elijah. The captain went up to him while he was sitting on the top of a hill. He told him, Prophet, the king says, Come down. Elijah replied to the captain, If I am indeed a prophet, may fire come down from the sky and consume you and your fifty soldiers. Fire then came down from the sky and consumed him and his fifty soldiers. The king sent another captain and his fifty soldiers to retrieve Elijah. He went up and told him, Prophet, this is what the king says, come down at once. Elijah replied to them, If I am indeed a prophet, may fire come down from the sky and consume you and your fifty soldiers. Fire from God came down from the sky and consumed him and his fifty soldiers. The king sent a third captain and his fifty soldiers. This third captain went up and fell on his knees before Elijah. He begged for mercy. Prophet, please have respect for my life and for the lives of these fifty servants of yours. Indeed, fire came down from the sky and consumed the two captains who came before me, along with their men. So now, please have respect for my life. The Lord's angelic messenger said to Elijah, Go down with him. Don't be afraid of him. So he got up and went down with him to the king. Elijah said to the king, This is what the Lord says. You sent messengers to seek an oracle from Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron. You must think there is no god in Israel from whom you can seek an oracle. Therefore, you will not leave the bed you lie on, for you will certainly die. He died just as the Lord had prophesied through Elijah. In the second year of the reign of King Jehoram, son of Jehoshaphat over Judah, Ahaziah's brother Jehoram replaced him as king of Israel because he had no son. The rest of the events of Ahaziah's reign, including his accomplishments, are recorded in the scroll called the Annals of the Kings of Israel. Just before the Lord took Elijah up to heaven in a windstorm, Elijah and Elisha were traveling from Gilgal. Elijah told Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As certainly as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Some members of the prophetic guild in Bethel came out to Elisha and said, Do you know that today the Lord is going to take your master from you? He answered, Yes, I know. Be quiet. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he replied, As certainly as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. 
so they went to Jericho. Some members of the prophetic guild in Jericho approached Elisha and said, Do you know that today the Lord is going to take your master from you? He answered, Yes, I know. Be quiet. Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he replied, As certainly as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they traveled on together. The fifty members of the prophetic guild went and stood opposite them at a distance, while Elijah and Elisha stood by the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, folded it up, and hit the water with it. The water divided, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, What can I do for you, before I am taken away from you? Elisha answered, May I receive a double portion of the prophetic spirit that energizes you. Elijah replied, That's a difficult request. If you see me taken from you, may it be so. But if you don't, it will not happen. As they were walking along and talking, suddenly a fiery chariot pulled by fiery horses appeared. They went between Elijah and Elisha, and Elijah went up to heaven in a windstorm. When Elisha was watching, he was crying out, My father, my father, the chariot and horsemen of Israel. Then he could no longer see him. He grabbed his clothes and tore them in two. He picked up Elijah's cloak, which had fallen off him, and went back and stood on the shore of the Jordan. He took the cloak that had fallen off Elijah, hit the water with it, and said, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When he hit the water, it divided and Elisha crossed over. When the members of the prophetic guild in Jericho, who were standing at a distance, saw him do this, they said, The spirit that energized Elijah rest upon Elisha. They went to meet him and bowed down to the ground before him. They said to him, Look, there are fifty capable men with your servants. Let them go and look for your master, for the wind sent from the Lord may have carried him away and dropped him on one of the hills or in one of the valleys. But Elisha replied, Don't send them out. But they were so insistent he became embarrassed, so he said, Send them out. They sent the fifty men out, and they looked for three days, but could not find Elijah. When they came back, Elisha was staying in Jericho. He said to them, Didn't I tell you, don't go? The men of the city said to Elisha, Look, the city has a good location, as our master can see, but the water is bad and the land doesn't produce crops. Elisha said, Get me a new jar and put some salt in it. So they got it. He went out to the springs and threw the salt in. Then he said, This is what the Lord says. I have purified this water. It will no longer cause death or fail to produce crops. The water has been pure to this very day, just as Elisha prophesied. He went up from there to Bethel. As he was traveling up the road, some young boys came out of the city and made fun of him, saying, Go on up, Baldy, go on up, Baldy. When he turned around and saw them, he called God's judgment down on them. Two female bears came out of the woods and ripped forty-two of the boys to pieces. From there, he traveled to Mount Carmel and then back to Samaria. God, I, I think a lot about that story at the end with Elisha and the boys, as it's put. And a lot of people are like, oh, that was so mean. You know, they made fun of him being bald and he goes and kills them. <laughs> oh, if only that's what had happened. So we know that Bethel is kind of the the focal point for all of Israel's problems with keeping their faith. And we know that these boys are probably taunting Elisha. Um, perhaps not that he's bald, but bald intentionally. Maybe that's that they think maybe that's the, the way the prophets looked back then. Um, but we know this dissension that is happening in Bethel is very widespread. Uh, and we do know that this is probably a group of about 50 young men who definitely pose a threat to Elisha 
considering the political and religious viewpoints of that day. Uh, so calling down judgment as even a preventative measure for Elisha not being killed himself is probably something that went through his head. Plus, I think more importantly, stopping people who are against what you say, God, against what we believe in. I think it's important for us to realize that we not only have every right to stand up for what we believe in, uh, but we should, just like Elisha did in this case, definitely stand up uh, for what we believe in. I think sometimes we let things go on too long, especially in the social media places, because we're, we're afraid to say anything to anybody, afraid to hurt their feelings. What will they think about me? Um, will they counterattack me, even though we're not attacking in the first place? And God, you know, I have a situation like that coming up where uh, when I physically see this person in person here soon, I'm going to have to sit down with them and go, look, you can't keep saying what you're saying uh, online. And, and here's why. And I'm going to have to just be really black and white. And uh, this person has a lot of pull. This person has a lot of power as far as online goes. Um, but who I represent, which is you, God, who I represent online is too important for me not to make a stand against what this person is saying. Um, it's wrong. It's belligerent. Um, it's threatening. And, and it's time for it to end. And just like Elisha called out your judgment on these these men who are taunting him threatening him um, I'm, I'm not expecting bears to come out at the conference to take care of this person uh, but I do know that we can have your strength in those moments where we do need to confront somebody and say look you know I, everybody has their own beliefs totally get that you know hopefully one day we can talk more about this but right now you can't say what you're saying and here's why um, and I know that whatever words I need to say to this person so that they will hear me I know you'll put those words in my mouth that day that it won't be about my ego it won't be threatening because it's not my ego against their ego it will just be whatever you need them to hear that day so God, I just pray for wisdom for people. I pray for strength for people. I pray for discernment to say not only the right words, but at the right time to people. Um, we need to stand up for our faith. Nobody else is going to stand up for our faith. It is our responsibility. And it's our responsibility to uh, protect what you have created.